everyone. Thanks for jumping on today on this Wednesday. We're going to get started here in just a few minutes. We wanted to allow everybody the opportunity to get on and make sure your sound is working. If you can hear us OK, shoot us over um, a message in the questions tab so we know that you can hear us. Um, and we'll get started in just a second. Just hang tight with us for a minute. All right, so it sounds like you all can hear us and see the presentation, which is great. And my name is Lauren Conaway. I am the marketing manager at School LED. And thank you again for being on the call with us today. Um, I will pass this over to Jeff Bassett here in just a second to get started. But please, if you have any questions throughout our time, make sure you send those over through the questions tab and we'll be sure to get those answered. Um, with that, Jeff, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Lauren. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the, the second training that we're doing on the Wednesday wizardry. Uh, we had a good training last week. Uh, thanks for everyone who, uh, thanks to everyone who was able to join last week. Um, this week, I'm excited about the topic, um, uh, cabinets and cloud signs. Um, there's a, a lot to talk about today. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of different options and, um, you know, similar to last week, I'll go ahead and go through some PowerPoint slides, uh, fewer slides uh, this week than we had last week, and then I'll jump over into the software and um, and go through uh, some examples. We'll do some example uh, layouts using uh, different products and uh, and different types of uh, cabinets and cloud signs. So again, as um, as Lauren said, if if you have questions, um, go ahead and put them in the um, through the GoToWebinar um, interface, and uh, and we'll try to answer them. So, um, okay. So this is uh, this is what I have for the agenda. Um, the beginning part will have a couple introductions and and sort of go through some options for how to lay out um, uh, both stick products standard backlight products and sidelight products um, for cabinets. So we've got a few different options there. Um, we'll talk about basic rectangles. Um, we'll move into uh, circles and ellipses, triangles, you know, other, other standard shapes. And then cloud signs, um, which start to be, you know, there's a lot of, of uh, different types and styles and varieties of, of cloud signs. And, and I have a category of other because, um, you know, as soon as I think I've seen everything, uh, then uh, you know, <laughs> you guys come up with with some uh, some shape or some sign or or something crazy that um, that we've never seen, so or that I've never seen. So so there's an other um, category as well. So um, as I as I did last week, here's what we're we're not really talking about today, and and uh, um, we we might get into. A couple of things here and there, but um, we're not talking about um, custom files and file imports. So we are doing that next week. So that's next Wednesday. That'll be a, a good one as well. How do we get all these, um, uh, all this artwork into LED Wizard? We'll talk about the production edition um, the following Wednesday. Um, and I'd like to continue. Uh, we'll probably schedule some more of these um, 
uh, to talk about stats and title blocks, um, as well as power supply loading. We had a couple questions on power supply loading last week. Um, the recording is available from last week, uh, the PowerFlow webinar. Uh, so you should, if you were on, you should have had access to that. If you were uh, not on last week, I'm sure that we can uh, we can get you a link to uh, to the topic from last week. Okay. And as I always do in my presentations, I want to uh, to put this slide up as a reminder of the three layout uh, options that you have uh, with, with Principal LED. And I will mention today a little bit about Easy Layout Builder. Um, some of the, the simpler cabinets um, can and should be done there. And, uh, and some of the larger, more complicated stuff uh, at the end um, might be a good, uh, a good fit for our internal layout team. Uh, but anyway, so that's just a, a reminder again, three options, you know, try to use the appropriate uh, option for the, the job that's in front of you. Okay, so, um, you know, I think with with cabinets and cloud science, you know, as I started to prepare this, uh, and I realized that there's, there's a lot of variables here, uh, and there are a lot of um, different styles of, of cabinets and, and you know, we tend to think of these as uh, as pretty simple, you know, rectangular cabinets. Uh, but um, anyone who's who's been doing this long enough knows that there's there's a lot of gotchas and there's a lot of variables and and there are things that that can impact uh, you know how we how we lay out uh, what products we use. So um, you know, simple things. Obviously, there's the size and the depth and and uh, but how many sides? Uh, single side, double side. You could have a triple, triple or quadruple style sign, right? You see these um, from time to time. <clears throat> um, and then what's what's inside of the cabinet? Is there a pole in there? Is there one pole? Is there multiple pole? Where is it located? Are there some kind of baffles in there? Uh, are there is there other hardware that uh, would impact how the light is distributed to the face? Um, are there what I call legacy, you know, fixtures and sockets? Right? Are we taking something out uh, related to this? Is it a retrofit or is it is a new construction? Um, if it's a retrofit, you might not really know what's in there until you get up there and, and open it up. Um, so what's on the face, right? This might determine what, what product we use or what depth we select. Is it a vinyl face? Is, it, is there something printed on there? Are there some acrylic letters? Are we using some kind of enhancement film, for example, from 3M. So, <clears throat> you know, I, and I think what's on the face is, is something we always want to know when we do a layout. Do we need this layout to be a little bit brighter, perhaps, uh, than a standard layout based on what's on the face? Um, where's the power, right? Where's the power? How, how is it mounted? How, how do you access this? Is it up on a pole? Is it, is it easily accessible on the ground? Um, do you need a bucket truck? Like, what's, uh, you know, what are, what are the details about how we're gonna how we're gonna get power to this thing? Um, what permits are needed? Are there particular sign codes? Uh, what are the UL requirements? So, um, you know, I, and this list could go on and on. So, I, I think just something to think about as, you know, as I go through here in the training, different options. You might be thinking, well, that's a good option to use a stick product or that's a good option, I would use a standard backlight product. Um, so just some of the questions, you know, some of the things that you guys see every day with, uh, with the jobs you're working on. So I, I made this little table and I think this um, ought to provide a good summary um, as a starting point of, of, um, of some different options here, okay? So, um, you know, sticks are, are stick products, primarily pinnacle stick, tap out stick, you know, we have these both in 12 volt um, and 24 volt uh, versions. Um, uh, and then, you know, SS and DS, single sided, double sided, pretty much anything I think we'll do today for the most part <clears throat> could be single sided or double sided. Um, you know, when, when we talk about sticks, we're, we're laying out in parallel. Okay, so we're, we're running the sticks vertically or horizontally. We've got a, um, a run gap value that's consistent. Uh, pretty much with sticks, um, it, it's all going to be parallel, and that's that's pretty much the case um, across the board here. 
even circles, ellipses, cloud signs. Um, and this is actually a big um, uh, a big improvement in LED Wizard 8, which is that we can put multiple size sticks in the same cabinet. So we used to only be able to put, you know, uh, a single a single length stick, a 48 inch stick or whatever. But now we can put sticks in um, into very complicated shapes, actually. And I'll I'll show a couple examples of that. So standard backlight modules, uh, such as our new Patriot series, the new 24 volt module. Uh, the Quick Mod series, Street Fighters. Um, there are actually really three uh, layout options for basic modules. Uh, we can do uh, an inline or, or concentric inlines, uh, which would be sort of the, um, the the channel letter style, right? Where you you come off some distance from the return, and then we have a, a you know a run gap value. We can also run standard modules in parallel. Uh, and in fact, with regular modules, we can do that at an angle as well. It doesn't have to be vertical or horizontal. We can do that at, at an angle, uh, and I can show you that. Now, we have another option called hybrid, which I like for, for standard modules. Hybrid is a single inline, and then parallel runs inside of that inline. And uh, I think it's effective for, uh, certainly for some cloud signs that may have a, an irregular shape uh, that single inline gets light out, out to the edges, but then simplifies the layout just by having uh, parallel runs uh, in, inside of that. So that's that's hybrid. And then, um, you know, side light modules, uh, we don't talk a, a lot about these within principle, uh, but we have a pod and pod HO, uh, which are uh, return mounted and uh, and cast a light across uh, across the cabinet from um, usually from both sides or perhaps all the way around depending on uh, the cabinet and the shape. So this is another um, another option, and uh, and I'll show a couple layouts of uh, of how we would do it for side light. You know, side light modules really are I think for smaller cabinets because there's a you know a, a maximum throw distance. I think it's about uh, four, four or five feet um, for pod, pod HO um, from from two sides. So that's that's a little bit of a limitation depending on this on the size. But um, and fed finally on this topic, I just wanted to say that there are um, even though there are many options here, I think the approach to creating these layouts and the steps to creating these layouts are actually very similar. Uh, whether you have a, a rectangle or a circle or a cloud sign, and you'll see me in the demo going through, you know, essentially the same steps, um, really through this through this process. Um, and and some of the options, um, most of the options that we have to figure out um, are here in the PowerFlow property bar, and this um, again is something that we went through uh, quite a bit last week, but the um, the sections here that I've highlighted in yellow uh, are uh, more specific in some cases to cabinets. Um, and in fact, these, if you see the mouse here, these options here um, really are only for cabinets. These are the, uh, the icons here that help us figure out the kind of layout we want to do for, for a cabinet. So I'll just go through these because um, this is a little bit different uh, from what we what we talked about for for channel letters. So um, the spacing value, which for a standard module is just the the center to center measurement. You know, for a stick, it's essentially the the length of the stick, right? So if you have a 48 inch stick, the actual size of that stick is a, is just a little bit less than 46 inches. So it's a it's about an inch shorter on on uh, on each end so that it can um, it can plug in and everything, but um, for our purposes, when we show spacing, we put uh, we put the length of the stick as that value. Uh, the next item here, parallel rotation. So this this would would not be for for sticks. This would be for standard backlight, uh, you know, Patria module, Quick Mod, and, and that's the uh, the angle. If uh, if you have a parallel, um, uh, you want to do it in a parallel, but you want to do it at an angle. Um, so this is either the numeric value or you can uh, graphically click on this little uh, icon here and it'll it'll set the angle for you. 
the the next two are for parallel uh, horizontal uh, and for parallel ver vertical. So you can toggle back and forth between these. This actually uh, takes you into the parallel um, layout mode. So the, these, one of these is really the critical, it's probably the first thing that you want to do when you when you have a shape and you want to get into this mode of, of doing uh, parallel layouts, you would click on one of those. The next one is called core series flexible mode. And if you see the icon, <clears throat> it has um, parallel runs, but they're of different sizes. So essentially what that means when you go into core series flexible mode, that means that that's the mode where you can use different sized sticks uh, in the same layout. So when you're in that mode, you don't even actually have to select a certain size of the stick. You're basically in uh, the, the family, or we call it a core series. So in this example, I have tap out pinnacle stick single sided. So that means that, that any size of a tap out stick pinnacle single sided would be available when I'm in that mode. And it'll pick the appropriate size stick based on uh, the parameters that I put in and based on your artwork. So that's a that's a key um, option right there. The next one is um, is full manual mode. And full manual mode, <coughs> excuse me, really gives us um, the options to, to fine tune exactly how that layout looks. Um, it's especially helpful when you're doing a cloud sign <clears throat> because, um, you know, in some cases, you, you kind of have to play with the spacing a little bit, right? You want to make sure that you've got good coverage. It's maybe a very odd shape. Um, so, so full manual mode. It allows you to independently um, uh, change clearance, end gap, run gap, and number of runs. Um, and I'll talk later about when you might want to change the number of runs. Um, to cover perhaps not the entire cabinet. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that. So that's that's full manual mode, very flexible, allows you to, to dial in um, your values specifically. <clears throat> and then auto center is um, really also, I, I would say for um, cloud signs and irregular shapes. That, that basically centers um, the runs. If you've, if you've made some adjustments, sometimes the runs uh, might not be perfectly centered, and that's a way to center. And there's a manual way to adjust um, runs as well. So, um, you know, these options that I just described, um, a good understanding of this is really the the core for being able to handle any any type of of cabinet. Um, I think even though I'll talk about different different styles and different different shapes and things, these really are the options that. Uh, that I think you need to learn. So I'll go through on every example and, and explain what I'm doing there. <clears throat> um, hybrid layout is, again, for backlit modules. And again, that's the layout where you have a single inline and then you have, you have parallel runs inside of that. Um, Double-sided is, is a new option um, that will automatically trigger when you're, um, when you're using a, a double-sided stick product, okay? Um, in some cases, the, the, the density guidelines might be different. Um, so there, that's kind of just a trigger for, um, for double-sided. And then um, the remaining options here, so, so clearance and end gap. Um, you know, one of the um, differences with using stick products and cabinets is you want that stick to go pretty deep into the end of the cabinet, right? So, um, uh, you know, you don't want to have a lot of extra space at the end. Remember that the six are only every every six inches or 12 inches. So you want to make sure that if possible that you get all the way into to the end of that cabinet. So that's why we have um, a little bit better control of, of clearance and run gap to make sure that you have the, the largest possible um, uh, you know, length of, of, of opportunity there to put the stick in. So remember, if you have a 48 inch stroke cabinet, you're, you know, you can put a 48 inch stick in there. The actual stick is about 46 inches. So that's only one inch um, on, on either side of the cabinet. So um, that's why we have these values generally set at, at, at zero or one. Um, and then the run gap value, this is, um, this is now fixed for stick layouts. And if you had run version 7.1 uh, or seven before, you knew that, that we had this idea of 
actual run gap, which was in some cases a calculation. Um, we actually used clearance value as the value that you entered, and then we figured out the run gap. Well, this this is flip that now. We're saying for stick products, the important thing is that the run gap is a certain value, 10, 12, uh, you know, 16, 18, something like that. And then for runs, generally the number of runs is a calculation. Um, you can override that, uh, and you can put in um, a fewer number of runs uh, if you if you want to. Generally, that is calculated from the rest of the data. And then finally, here there's there's one other graphic here, and this is from the PowerFlow tab, and that's the button called New Guide Path. So. You'll see me as I go through this and, and as I, I change some settings that I have to click on new guide path. And that essentially resets the data and says, OK, generate um, a new guide path or a new series of guide paths, um, you know, based on the, the changes that I've made in the data. So new guide path in the PowerFlow tab. So um, so that's that's kind of an overview of, of the different options in the in the PowerFlow property bar. And really, this is everything that you need to define um, how you lay out your cabinet. Okay, and that's the basis for, for what I'll talk about here. So I, I'll go through uh, a few different options here and, and really um, just get on the software and, and show this to you. So rectangular cabinets, uh, you know, fast and easy, right? This is, uh, you know, this is pretty easy for the software to do a basic rectangular cabinet in fact, it's the kind of thing that you might consider doing an easy layout builder. If you have a standard rectangular cabinet, nothing special or fancy about that cabinet, the online version will do it for you in a few seconds. Um, I, I did want to mention here that there there is um, we we've set up um, a little spreadsheet that we that we've included in the software that has different combinations of stick lengths that are above. 120, okay, above 10 feet, up to 20 feet. And so if you look at this cabinet, this is a, a 20 foot wide cabinet. And we have, I know it's probably hard to see, but we have two uh, 10 foot sticks end to end, and that would be the maximum. So if this was, uh, you know, 186 inches, then whatever the optimal combination of stick lengths are to fit that cabinet, um, that's how we would lay it out. Okay, so up to 240. Beyond 240, uh, you're on your own. You're going to have to figure, <laughs> figure it out. But uh, between 120 and 240, we, we've sort of done that math, and um, and so you'll have you'll have sticks end to end. Okay, but again, basic rectangular cabinets, pretty simple. Um, that'll be the first thing that I that I go through in the software. Um, circular and elliptical cabinets. Um, there there are actually a few of the layout options that I think are legitimate for. Um, for circles and ellipses. Um, easy layout builder, just FYI, um, will only do our standard backlight modules in parallel. So there aren't as many options in the online version as there are in LED Wizard 8 for um, for circles and ellipses. But in LED Wizard 8, again, we do lay out multiple size sticks in the same cabinet for circular elliptical. So it, it might look something like this. And again, that um, that end spacing, you know, really is determined by uh, the length of that run and and the stick that fits, right? So, in this case, it's a pretty clean, uh, you know, that's a pretty clean layout. Oh, and for <clears throat> for circles and, and ellipses, um, you know, hybrid layout uh, is a is a good option where there's a single run and there's parallel. If you're using our standard backlight modules. Um, side light is great for circles and ellipses because you have a, a continuous, uh, you know, path around here with different angles where the light is um, is pointing into the middle. So it is um, it is a good option for uh, for side light modules. Okay, so pretty pretty straightforward. Um, cloud signs. Now we start to get a little bit more complex, and um, uh, you know, you start getting into cloud signs, and and I think the complexity really increases. A lot of crazy shapes, um, sizes that I've seen, but really based on what I've been describing, the approach to doing a cloud sign is exactly the same as say a circle or an ellipse. Um, 
so the the, the one thing that um, <clears throat> that is perhaps helpful um, is this idea that you can adjust um, the uh, the vertical or horizontal paths to better fit um, the size of a cloud sign, and I'll show you that. So the the run um, line actually in some cases goes outside of the outside of the shape, and you can click and drag that around and, and reposition it. Um, so I'll, I'll show you that, and that's that's how you can get really clean spacing on on a cloud sign. Um, and, and here again, here's a cloud sign where I've I've got uh, different length sticks in there. Um, you know, sticks are not just for basic shapes anymore. Um, sticks can be used in uh, in all kinds of crazy shapes and applications. So, um, you know, in a in a fairly automated way, um, we can lay out a more complex um, cloud sign using our stick products. Um, and as I said before, with circles and ellipses, you know, hybrid and and side light uh, potentially uh, may be good options um, depending on the the size um, and shape of the cloud sign. Okay, so um, so I think consistent with with previous uh, previous options and and finally here's here's other cabinets and um, again I, I've seen a lot of things since um, I've been part of Principal LED and and seeing some of the layouts that come through um, you know we can do marquee style layouts uh, you know you could have um, modules outside of um, some text but inside of a larger cabinet. Um, in, in any sort of parallel configuration. Um, you, know, you can do a cabinet where you're only putting modules or sticks in a certain section because you've got push through letters. So, you know, normally we're trying to evenly backlight the entire cabinet, but I'll show you how to make adjustments so that you can only put in, uh, you know, modules where the letters are. Um, and, and that's pretty easy to do. You could have layouts where there's a face lid and halo lid in the same object. Um, still a little bit tricky for us, but we have we have a couple ways to do that. Um, you might have cabinets that have multiple lighting technologies, right? Maybe you're you're uh, you have some flex tubing around the outside, and maybe you have some uh, you know neon highlights or or things like that, or you know a layout that has sticks and uh, module standard modules in it. And again, the complexity um, uh, goes through the roof here in some cases uh, with multiple lighting technologies, but um, you know, these are things with our Neon Wizard product and with different products we have in LED Wizard 8 that we can handle um, some pretty complex layouts. Okay, so I guess a couple of final things before um, I get into the software, and, and that is that um, last week we talked about PowerFlow, and I just want to reiterate here that a lot of the same options are uh, are, are still used with cabinets. So here in the PowerFlow tab, there's populate. Normally you wouldn't do populate all, you would just do populate, you have a single cabinet. These, um, these tools here for, uh, uh, you know, automating power supply loading, automating merging into a title block, automating dimensions, those are all still legitimate for, for cabinets. Um, you can still module edit, and vector guide path edit uh, a path for a cabinet layout. You can manually populate just by clicking. You can click a stick um, into a layout uh, just as you can with a normal module. Um, and, and as I said, you know, backlit, uh, you know, halo lit and face lit and things like that are, are possible as well. So, um, so you know, I think that's pretty standard. I think that the Power flow property bars I showed before is really where you um, where you do all the settings. Okay, so let me get into this. If uh, I'll take a second, um, Lauren, and just uh, confirm if there's any questions at this point. No questions right now, but if you do have them, please send them in through the questions window, and we'll answer. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, let's um, let's get into it here. So I'm just going to uh, draw a rectangle and um, I don't know what shape this is, 99 by 51, um, just a random. And I'm gonna go into PowerFlow. Um, of course, you could be importing um, a, uh, a cabinet file as well. So I'm gonna go here, again, with the brands, it's Principal LED and it's our partner, GE Current. Um, the, the series listing here, 
you know, last week I, I pretty much did uh, Patriot and Quick Mod, but now if you if you go further down the list, um, you see the stick products, right? Tap out Pinnacle Stick, um, Tap out Stick, um, 24 um, volt versions of these, double sided, single sided, some of the older legacy products, Street Stick, and then uh, down here we have uh, Pod, Pod and uh, Pod HO. So I'll start with Pinnacle Stick, single sided. And of course, we have um, you know deeper depths associated with um, the the stick products. So when I when I click on um, the drop down list, I see that I've got my sizes that go from uh, you know 18 to 120. Okay, and these are these are pretty standard. So I'm going to select uh, 48 for my cabinet that is uh, 51, almost 52 inches. And you can see that that my my guide paths come in. And, uh, and you can see, you know, the preview module is the same as a, a standard channel letter style layout. Um, you'll see that I have my run gap of 12, and that's reading the density guidelines. Um, I've got eight runs. My, my clearance zero, run, end gap one, you know, these are, um, these are small numbers. You know, I don't want that run to trim back on the end because that would lead me to, um, Perhaps using too short of a stick, and then the um, you know what we call the the clearance value. You know we have we have math that figures out um, uh, you know when another run should be put in and what that value should be. So it's actually the clearance value now that varies, and it's the run gap value that's that's consistent. Okay, so populate. I'm not going to do anything uh, the automated tools yet, um, but that's a basic. Um, rectangular cabinet population. Okay, pretty straightforward. Same thing you'd get um, you know, in the in the online system. Um, if I if I did um, let's do this again. And um, I'm not going to go through this in in a lot of detail uh, today, but I just want to show the automated tools here um, are uh, Pretty easy with uh, with the stick products. So let's go back in here, and I want to do this uh, again from uh, from the beginning. Okay, so the same thing I just did, except I'm going to load um, optimal by modules, and this is I have uh, Pinnacle stick. This is um, 12 volts, so that that driver is fine. Principal landscape sticks is the title block that I'll use, um, and I'll put um, both dimensions. So I'm going to check these boxes before I do it, and do populate. Um, so I mentioned, you know, this kind of a stick layout, this kind of a of a basic um, rectangle. Uh, you know, this is the kind of thing that should be pretty fast and easy. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's that's my layout. All right. Uh, you know, there are some additional things that I could edit here, uh, move things around and all that. But um, this this title block template has row spacing and has mounting brackets, right? Two mounting brackets per stick. Um, so really that that process of a basic rectangle uh, is is super fast. Um, OK, so that that's a basic rectangle. I don't think that really we need to spend a whole lot of time on that. Let me go now to an ellipse. And again, I'm just drawing this in. Um, and so when I first click into PowerFlow, um, it, it defaults into uh, you know the the concentric inlines, the series of inlines. And so I want to I want to go back and 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 select uh, one of the stick products. And in this case, I am going to um, use some of the some of the options that we talked about before. So I'm going to do this as a as a, a parallel vertical, okay? And I'm going to use core series flexible mode. So you see now that I've got a single, I've got a 36 inch stick, but clearly that's not the right size for um, for for all of the runs, okay? If if for, for any of them. So I'm here. I'm now doing core series flexible mode. But you can also see that that as I talked about before, that my run doesn't really go deep enough into the end of the cabinet. So I'm also going to do full manual mode, and and these three kind of tend to go hand in hand. I think core series and manual mode tend to go tend to go together, um, and so 
I'll enter uh, one for clearance. All right, one for clearance is going to change. And watch when I do new guide path. So remember, as I change that, I click on new guide path. Now that run goes all the way into the end, right? I don't want to trim too far back because I will be trimming just naturally if I don't have a stick that fits it perfectly anyway. So I might be coming back a few inches. Uh, so that is my, um, you know, this is my preview, right? You can see that I've got the runs that are long enough. I, I have these two options selected. Um, and it, it looks like that I'm, I'm not perfectly centered uh, if you look at the runs. So um, auto center, the, the fourth option here, and again, if I click on um, new guide, oh, it's not quite, not quite centering. Um, so it looks like I'll, I'll show this a little bit sooner than I, than I anticipated. And that is how to uh, adjust this. Okay. So any of these, any of these guide paths, you can click and drag, right? And you can, you can get this positioned exactly the way you want it. Um, and and so that's a little bit of a, a little bit of a fine tuning that I did. I don't have to do new guide path. I have the guide path, and I'm just uh, I'm just making a subtle adjustment. Okay. So just for speed, I'm just going to take these off. Um, and that is my uh, that is my layout. Okay. So really, the the effort here is just in getting getting the right parameters, right? Getting the right parameters set up. Um, you know, it, it, sometimes you have little optical illusions here. You know, this this is all the same size stick. It looks like that this one is a little bit longer just because that uh, that ellipse comes in a little bit. Um, but it picks the best fitting stick, the longest stick that'll fit based on the length of that path. Okay, so that's a basic ellipse. That would be the same for uh, a circle or or any other style of ellipse. Um, pretty straightforward. Now I want to show. Now get into uh, to cloud signs, and really, there's to to create a cloud sign from scratch. There there are two ways um, that I like to do it, and uh, one is using the freehand drawing tool. And this is kind of um, in my uh, in my PowerPoint. I had that might be too sharp there. I had an example that I that I just basically drew like this. So let me fix this. So these are uh, the freehand draw tool draws this as Bezier curves, and you can see that it converts to Bezier curves and allows me to go in and uh, and make any edit, any edits. Okay, so here's my cloud sign, and of course this could be this could be anything, could have any uh, uh, any face graphics or anything. Of course this can be scaled if if I if I knew, for example, that it was uh, you know 144 inches wide, I can just type in. Um, a value there, um, a hider width value. So, so that's that's what we'll start with. And when I go into PowerFlow, um, again, the first thing I want to do is switch to parallel. And this is actually a good um, <laughs> a good example here for uh, for why we don't do layouts this way, right? If you look at this layout, uh, you know how easy is it for for your folks to install, put LEDs down, um, you know, compared to something like this. Uh, so parallel really makes a lot of sense uh, for something like this. So let's go back in here and we'll do, uh, I don't know, we'll do tap out stick, um, double-sided. Notice that double-sided depths are a lot um, a lot greater, let's say uh, 16. And where's my modules? Let's see. It's like we have some issue with our tap out stick. Let's try try single sided. There we go. Huh. Okay, so here's here's tap out stick. Tap out stick single sided. We'll take a look and see what uh, see what the issue is there. Now I did select a um, a 60 inch, and of course the the first thing I'll do is go to core series flexible mode so I get uh, the different lengths this is the steps here are exactly the same as what I just did for the elliptical cabinet All right I'm going to do full manual mode um, clearance here um, I'll put it one um, my run gap for this product uh, is actually uh, 16 inches uh, in this case at this depth um, I'll click on new guide path 
and, and here's a good example for why um, sometimes we adjust the run. So I've got a little bit of, of I would say, too much space here on the end. I've got this one run that's that's barely in there. So I can just move this guy over a little bit, and uh, and we'll see if that is uh, if that is long enough to put maybe the 18-inch stick in there. Um, so I made that little adjustment, uh, pretty straightforward, and then uh, and then I click on populate. So again, uh, the fact that this is uh, some odd shape that I just made up on the fly is is irrelevant to the basic steps um, uh, to to do this. Um, and again, if if you um, if you want to do the automated tools, you can. Of course, you can also um, you can also do these one at a time, and uh, the mismatch of a driver there. You can do these one at a time, and you can load, and you can merge, and and, and do things like that. Pretty. Um, let's do a 120. Um, you know, uh, one by one here, you can you can do that. So I had had uh, the 24 volt driver uh, defaulted, and so it warned me and said you can't do that. So that's a good a good mechanism there to make sure you don't. Uh, don't load the wrong thing, um, but you know when we load uh, when we load a cabinet with sticks, we generally do optimal by modules. So that'll just do um, you know each stick that fits. Uh, I was able to get uh, all of this on uh, on one 120 volt one 120 watt driver. Okay, so that is um, cloud signs, and and there's there's another. Um, way that you can uh, create a layout for, for a cloud sign. And this is just something uh, to think about. And I don't know that um, this font is that exciting. Let's see if I can find a font that's more interesting. But so, so the idea is that you do, um, you do an outline, but you do a very large outline, right? You do an outline that, um, where it uh, it welds out. You know, this is this is our basic outline tool. So I've got a um, you know a, a 28 percent percentage based on the based on the height. So if I take off, leave original, um, okay, that um, that becomes my my cloud sign. I I elected not to keep that that cloud lettering on there, but you know I I, I could have just as easily. Um, so this is, you know, th this is in fact some ways that that cloud signs are created, uh, you know, to start with. You would you would just take your object and then you do uh, you do some kind of an outline to it. Um, so here's um, again, uh, you know, this is going to be this is going to be pretty uh, pretty basic. So let's let's take the opportunity to look at a couple other different layout options. Um, I think now that we we have a good understanding of um, of how the the stick products work. So if I do say, um, I guess I can use, I can use Patriot. So Patriot medium, let's say it's a five inch. Um, and, and so here's sort of how the, um, how the runs lay out, right? I've got a um, uh, 16 inch uh, run gap, and this is gonna look familiar, right? This is pretty much gonna be uh, the same as what we were just doing. Um, and I think with with standard modules, maybe we don't uh, we don't need to go quite as deep into the ends. Um, I certainly could have uh, could have made an edit like that. Um, you see here in some cases where uh, the end run kind of kind of clipped in a little bit, um, and that's actually pretty easy to fix. I mean, um, so the the basic concepts, if you're going to do it in parallel, um, are um, are pretty much the same. So. If you ever if you ever do a layout and you you get a case like this, um, it's easy to copy. Select this. So I'm going to do Shift click to make this selection. And if I just hold Control, uh, I can actually drag those modules over um, right into the new run. So that's um, that's that's pretty straightforward. I've talked about about um, hybrid layouts, which uh, which this is is a pretty good uh, uh, you know, layout option for hybrid. So I'm going to clear this, click on hybrid, and now you see that there's this uh, that there's this inline, and then there's parallel runs in between. And, I, and this module has has pretty pretty wide spacing. So um, I'm going to just 
override that just to create um, maybe just to create a better layout. So let's do let's do that. You can see oh, this thing's jumping jumping all around on me here. Um, you know, when I do four, you can see that that run gets a little bit tighter. Okay, so that gives me um, a um, you know an inline run around the outside, and and obviously my my spacing here is a little um, is a little loose, so I would probably probably not do it that way um, in this case. You know, I could sort of play with play with those settings. Now, I also mentioned um, the idea of an angled layout. And so here's uh, let me try that again. This should be giving me um, multiple angles there. For some reason, I only got one. Let's go back in there. Look at this again. There we go. So again, this is a pretty large, um, let's just bring this down a little bit. Um, so I, you know, I don't know that this is a great example for, uh, for parallel, but just the idea that, uh, that you can adjust these, uh, you can adjust this angle. Yeah, there are some, some cabinets and some, um, you know some some shapes that lend themselves to a certain angle. Maybe it's italicized or whatever. Um, so we we don't really do angled with sticks. We we do these with um, with standard backlight modules. So um, uh, you know this would be an example. And, and this value you can either change it. Um, you know here um, <clears throat> you can type in a value, or you can use this little. Um, uh, this little sort of clock interface, uh, and you can change the angle that way. Okay, so that's that's the idea of angled. Um, I've seen it used on really large text that's italicized. It works great, um, or certain cabinets that um, you know that have a certain um, a certain angle to them. So that's a that's a couple more um, a couple more options. Um, I did mention, um, and we can look at side light modules. I'm going to just bring this down a little bit. Um, to the point where um, we can we can throw light across on both sides. So um, I have this at 47 inches. I, I believe it's four feet um, from opposing sides that we can cover with uh, with the pod product. So I'm going to turn this off. Uh, I'm I'm switching out of parallel mode um, into into regular mode. And let's go down and select uh, pod and um, the thing with this, um, with these modules, is you want to um, set the clearance to a low value, right? You want to set the clearance to an inch, right? You want to be, or half an inch. You want to be basically right on the return. Um, and then you want to do, you want to do two runs, right? Two runs essentially in our vernacular means that you're, you're, you're just off the return like this. So that's that's kind of how you set up the layout for uh for a side light module okay and uh and it just goes in and uh, and shoots light across um, i do like it for circles and ellipses in some cases that uh that works well um, of course you have to be careful with uh hardware and things inside of a cabinet um, these can be used for single-sided or double-sided um, uh, not real deep depths but um, but that's uh, uh another option um, side light modules so um, let me go back to my PowerPoint. Let me do it on time. Okay. Um, I just wanted to see and review if there's any. Oh, I want to talk about uh, about push through. So um, I guess I can stay with. Um, let's stay with this cabinet. So the idea with um, with doing a layout that has push through letters is you don't want to. Um, you don't want to waste light where it doesn't need to be. So, it, you know, if I was creating, if I had some um, some letters here in the middle, and I wanted to create a layout where um, I'm only putting light through, how big is this? Um, you know, I'm only putting light through uh, where those letters are, 
right? Then I would I would do something like this. Um, and let's we can bring the clearance down, and you'll see that that I've already got I've only only got a couple runs in there anyway. Let's bring this back down. So I'm in full manual mode. So I'm just typing in. I'm just typing in values. So I, I've got two runs that I that I've entered here. And and clearly this layout would, if I was if I was trying to cover the whole cabinet, would uh, would require more than two runs. Okay. But if I just want if I had some letter in there and I just wanted to do those two, then um, then that's how I would do it. Right. So it's it's pretty easy really in manual mode to uh, to adjust that, okay. If this was, um, if I was lighting the full cabinet, then I would have, you know, I would have three or four rows, and I and I would adjust it. Uh, but because I I'm just wanting to light a certain section, um, I could do two, right? And and just as easily, you know, this is pretty simple. I could just click on this, uh, lay the whole thing out, uh, and just delete these other ones, right? So that's that's not a big deal. Um, you can see actually on this layout that I've got um, I've got some different sections. So I mentioned that we we add uh, we put sticks together for longer runs. So so here that's actually two sticks, and here that's two sticks. So that's our math. This is greater than 120 um, in in that case. So here uh, I could also just just delete like that and and be left with the modules in the middle. And um, I also mentioned that you can also just put, uh, you know, manually put in modules, and and that's an option here as well. And if you um, if you want to do something like that, um, if you do it manually, we don't actually let you put multiple size sticks in manually. That's all part of the automated tool. So if, if I were to, if for some reason I wanted to put sticks in here manually, um, you know, I would do this. I would use a um, a stick that's it's not letting me do it. I would use a stick that's smaller, such that I have a little bit more granularity with um, with how I wanted to do it. Let me go back out of here. Um, it's not as common to put in sticks manually into a cabinet. I don't really know um, that many cases where um, where you would need to do it. But um, so here I'm just um, in the same way that I would do. Um, a uh, you know a manual population with a standard module, I can go in here and just click and put sticks. So again, if you have some um, some art such that um, you only have to light uh, certain parts of the cabinet, um, let's say for some reason this is um, this is the area that needs to be lit, right? Um, that's a a pretty easy way to do it. Select a smaller stick, lay them out end to end, um, and just populate where you need to. If if you were doing this with uh, with a normal backlight module, uh, really the same you know the same concept, um, except you'd click and drag to uh, to add the module. So I can use the same um, the same concept. Let's say we're doing um, something really bright, quick mod four. Okay, so I, I'm using those those guide paths. That I've um, that I've created, and I'm just clicking, clicking and dragging my way along here to uh, oops, to put the modules where I need to be. Um, if I hold the control key, oops, in that case I moved uh, I moved the whole path. Um, if I hold the control key, then I can just um, I can just freehand draw a path. Okay. So uh, a couple of examples for lighting a cabinet uh, in a different spot or, or not lighting the entire cabinet. And, uh, and I see this kind of thing all the time as well. So um, let's see, I think that's most of what I wanted to show. I guess I can talk about facelit and halo lit. I wanna leave um, a few minutes for, for questions as well. Let me just do one more thing. So if you have, uh, if we go back in, to using this same cabinet. Let's say that this is um, a face lit and halo lit, um, and it has um, you know different products that you're doing that with. 
I would actually have to duplicate this. So really only stick products can, can do uh, multiple, essentially multiple products in the same object. So, um, so if I had this as a face lid and a halo lid, I would do two layouts and I would, I would position uh, the two cabinets on top of each other. Right, so let's say that this one, um, and that's fine, I can use, uh, that didn't look like a good layout, let's see. Let's try Patriot. Yeah, Patriot has very large, very large spacing. Oh, because I did eight inch depth. Let's do that a little bit lower. Get in here and actually show some modules here. So that's um, let's say that this was my my face layout, and then this one here. So I'm going to get out of parallel mode, and then I'm going to do this as um, as a different module. And this will be the this will be the halo. Let's say that I um, I do that with um, yeah with quick mod four. Um, so this would be a case where I would say that I want the clearance maybe to be um, to be just one inch, and I want two runs. Um, you know, there's a million different ways to of course do a um, a halo layout, but let's say that I that I did this. Um, and I'm not sure why I chose the modules that I did. Um, doesn't make a lot of sense, so I apologize for that. It's just the concept here, um, where you would then take these two layouts um, and you'd position them on top of each other. You'd have uh, one module for the halo and, and one, one module for the facelit. Um, so that's that's essentially the uh, that's the concept. You just have to be careful uh, when you generate the stats that you've now. Uh, perhaps doubled the area and doubled the perimeter. Now, if those are options that you have um, on your title block, you would just um, you would just have to be careful about that. Okay, so I think that's most of what I wanted to cover. Um, I, I talked before about copying, um, filling in that cabinet, so this is the the procedure for that, make the selection and hold control. We might do something like that. Okay, so that's a, a review of, of cabinets. And um, again, I know that I, that I covered um, a lot of different things there. Um, I didn't get in a whole lot to power supply loading and um, uh, title block merging and this sort of thing, but um, I think it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so are there are there any questions? I have um, looks like we have we have four minutes left. Um, while you're thinking of the questions, I'll I'll just mention again that the the procedure for doing these cabinets um, is, is pretty straightforward and consistent, uh, depending on um, uh, you know the size and the shape of the cabinet that you have. Uh, oftentimes, if you if you you know paying attention to the the way that I did this, it's it's very consistent. Uh, from from one to the other, um, especially using using the stick products. So, Lauren, do we have any questions? I have one right now, and the question is: Is there a way to overlay face artwork so the user can pinpoint where to put LEDs for the most efficient illumination? Um, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that, Lauren? I want to make sure I'm understanding. Yeah, sure. Is there a way to overlay face artwork so the user can pinpoint where to put LEDs for okay. the efficient sure. illumination? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that that is possible. So if you had um, if if you had a, an image, let's say, or let me go back to um, forget where I was here. Um, you know, if you had some some lettering that um, uh, you know, if, if these were your, your push through letters, for example, um, there's no reason why you couldn't put this on top of the layout uh, to know exactly, uh, you know, if you're doing the, the push through exactly where those should be. 
So the, you know, these can be different objects, right? You can populate the basic outside cabinet and then have the, um, have the letters on here, and that's fine. Um, you can also have an image, and let me see if I have any, um, where am I here? So this is, this was from last week. This is, turn the colors on. So this is, uh, this is just an image, you know. Um, this could be, you know, if, if I had an image that I wanted to put on top, remember that you can you can manage the transparency of an image. So you can put an image on top for reference. And by by knocking down the transparency, you can you can see through it, if you will, and uh, uh, and position that. And I see this all the time, and I think it's I think it's a good idea. Um, by the same token, if you had if you had some channel letters and you had you know raceway that that was behind it, something like this, um, you know you could very easily um, you know show that raceway again, even if if it was behind and and you wanted to show a um, in the image and you put that on top just for reference, um, you can absolutely do that, yeah. Great, that's the only question that has come through. So if okay. anybody has Terrific. a question, please feel free to send those in. Uh, you will get a follow-up email after today's webinar with links to the next two weeks webinars that we'll be hosting, um, as well as the opportunity to go back and watch today's webinar if you have any questions or need to go back for a reference. Okay, thanks very much, Lauren. I, I just wanted to put my contact information up here again and remind you that if if you have any particular questions, please reach out to me directly. Um, if if the cabinet you're working on isn't isn't coming together in the right way, and of course remember that that our internal team is is always a uh, a resource to you if uh, if something's not coming together right. So um, thanks everyone. Look forward to next week and uh, have a great rest of the week.